Hola compadres and welcome back to Woodby's interview series about Peter Hurd and his movie The Control Group. Last week Peter talked about post-production and this week we will listen to him talk about how to build an audience in the age of social media, the importance of streaming platforms, which festival is better for your independent movie, and distribution in the independent filmmaking world. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth. Not as much for the release, but leading up to it, um, for the film itself, you know, I still have Facebook and Twitter, and I still think that's one of the best ways to build an audience um, if you use it right. I think a lot of filmmakers jump into social media and think just because they have a Facebook page or just because they have a Twitter page that they're going to get followers, and that's not the case. You know, you need to... You need to really put some money in it to advertise even your social media page and by extension the film. Uh, you need to put some work into it just to get followers and you need to really put out good content consistently. And I'm not good at any of those things, so <laughs> I usually uh, hire promotional people to do social media work. <laughs> Twin Cities Film Festival was the best for us because it's local. Um, you know, it was easy to get a lot of people involved with the film there. They were willing to give us a better placement. We were kind of one of their bigger screenings that year that got more press. Um, so that was that was nice in that way with it being a local film that they had more of an incentive to push it out. Whereas a festival in LA, you know, it's it's it doesn't mean as much to them. And most of the bigger, more established festivals, I mean, not just Sundance, Toronto, and all that, um, but even big horror film festivals are, I don't want to say they're bought and paid for, but bigger companies definitely get better placement in their festivals. You know, you'll see a festival that a certain company a certain distributor is like a sponsor of it. And lo and behold, the opening night film that gets the most press is distributed by that company. You know, it's once you look into it, it's pretty blatant. They don't, you know, the Twin Cities Film Festival is not really like that. They're true independent film festivals. But a lot of the bigger, more established ones have really become sort of corporate takeover to a certain degree. Distribution for indie films right now, it's the Wild West, is what I keep telling people. So many things are changing so quickly. Um, you know, it's 2017 now. Ten years ago, DVD was doing wonderful. And five years before that, even better. Um, you know, even, even a couple of years ago, you could walk into Walmart, Target... And they had aisles and aisles of DVDs that included not just studio films, but a lot of indie films, older films. Um, there was a lot of retail DVD, and it was very profitable because when you sell to retail, they're buying ten thousand discs at a time, you know, or however many to have, you know, to have DVDs in WalMarts nationwide or Targets nationwide, um, and they're buying them up front from the distributor. So that's like your most reliable source of income. Today, that's pretty much gone. Um, you go into Walmart or Redbox, you know, people aren't really buying DVDs from there as much. And if they are, it's more, it's not films they don't know about because they can, you know, if you like low budget shark movies, you can go on Amazon Prime and there's about 5,000 of them. You know, you can type in shark and there's two headed shark attack, three headed shark attack, shark massacre, shark NATO, shark, whatever. It's all on Amazon Prime. It's all on Netflix. So when you see these crappy movies at Walmart, you know, you don't need to buy them anymore. Or even if you do see them at Redbox, you don't really need to rent them because they're available so much, you know, elsewhere. They're so easily available on Prime. And that goes for everything. It's not just shark movies. That's horror movies in general. That's movies in general. There's so much available that, you know, a lot of people are content to just watch Netflix and watch Amazon Prime. And that's 
all of their viewing so they don't need to rent from Redbox. They don't need to buy DVDs. They don't need to um, go to a theater. And that's really disrupting the whole indie model. And a lot of people are saying it's killing it off. And I think people just need to adapt to a new world of filmmaking or film distribution. I do not know how they can adapt to that. I am sure there is a way to do it. In that, but no one has quite figured it out. I think we're getting close to coming around that bend. It's just so many distributors are still focused on that old mindset, retail DVD, um, selling, uh, you know, huge quantities of DVDs at front, up front, having limited theatrical, none of that is profitable anymore. I mean, retail DVD is if you can get it, but you can't get it pretty much, you know, you're one in a million if you can get into Walmart. Uh, Redbox is, is probably the only viable way of doing that anymore. And even then, um, that's not as profitable as retail. You don't sell as many discs. And then a lot more people are seeing your movie without as much money coming to you because you're only selling the disc once and it's being rented, you know, an unlimited number of times after that. So it's just not as profitable as selling a DVD. A long time. Um, the film... We were talking to distributors, I mean, while we were in post-production, um, while we were finishing up the film, when we premiered at the Twin Cities Film Fest, we were talking to distributors then. And even then, after our premiere, it was still most of a year before we signed a distribution contract. We talked to a lot of different distributors, and a lot of times it went back and forth for weeks or even months, and there was always something that you know was not going to come together or it just didn't seem like the right fit um and so a lot of a lot of it was me saying no to a lot of offers that we got was what made it take so long um which dragged out the process but in retrospect i'm glad we did it because there's a lot of bad indie distributors out there and i think we dodged a bullet on many of them and the company that did end up distributing our film, Wild Eye Releasing, they were a really good fit for it. But even for them, we went back and forth for a couple months. And, um, you know, I don't want to get into all the contract negotiations, but I think for a while, I had essentially said no to them. And then they kind of came back a few months later and said, okay, what about if we did this? And they kind of revised their offer. And, you know, once they were willing to, to work with me and get the right terms for the agreement, then... I was willing to sign with them, but it's hard to get there, you know, and you never know for every offer you turn down, you never know if that's going to be the last one you're ever going to get. So you have to have faith that you're going to find the right one. Um, for the control group, our distribution so far, we started about six months ago with on demand and that was iTunes, Google play, Amazon download, Vudu. Uh, so you can rent or buy it from any of those. And now we're on DVD from Amazon, uh, Redbox. There's a theatrical screening in LA. Um, we're still trying to get at uh, streaming, streaming on Amazon prime. Um, we're still trying to get some cable showings and that sort of thing. But f right now it's pretty, pretty widely available for digital platforms or for DVD. You can rent it from family video. If there happens to be one in your neighborhood, there are more video stores around than people think there are, and that is actually not a huge part of the indie business, but one of the few places you can still really sell a couple hundred to a thousand DVDs at a time or more. Um, so family video, um, a surprising amount of libraries have it for rent um, or digitally, but just, just buy the DVD on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Tune in next week while we cover business, finances, and the legal aspect of independent filmmaking. I promise it's a lot more fun than it sounds. Ka-ching!